Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are continuing our Whiteboard Wednesday videos where we're talking about global load balancing. And today we're going to talk about dynamic load balancing modes on the GTM. So I'm going to draw a couple of things here on the whiteboard. So let's say you have a, uh, a GTM, and this GTM has, I'm going to give it uh, three virtual servers. So I'll just draw these quickly. And we are going to decide today, and I'll just put a big box around all this, we're going to decide today which of these virtual servers gets selected uh, for use. And so I will say this, because these are dynamic load balancing modes, the GTM is going to need to be able to know the status of each virtual server. So you'll need an LTM or some third party load balance or that kind of thing to be able to talk to the GTM and let it know, hey, here's how these virtual servers are doing. So if you don't have that ability to communicate between GTM and say LTM in this case, um, then these won't, you're not gonna, you're not gonna want to use these dynamic modes. Uh, but given that you have all that in place, um, then we're gonna be able to use these dynamic modes. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is CPU. And CPU essentially um, selects the virtual server with the most available CPU uh, you know, uh, capacity at that point. So whichever CPU is the most, has the most availability, then that virtual server gets selected. So it's pretty straightforward. But again, you can see why the GTM is gonna need to know the status of each virtual server. All right, so that's the CPU one. The next one is the kilobytes per second and I'm gonna to try to write this as uh, kilobytes per second. I'll just do like that. Kilobytes per second, and kilobytes per second uh, basically says, hey, which virtual server has the most bandwidth capacity at that point? Which one is, uh, you know, has, has, the, has the most available kilobytes per second, you know, availability, so, uh, or the least bandwidth utilization, however you wanna look at it. But, it, but it all results in the same thing of, you know, who can process the most kilobytes per second at that point. And so whichever one can, that's the one that gets selected. Um, and so both of these are pretty straightforward. The next one that we'll talk about is the uh, packet rate. So I'll write that one down here, packet uh, rate. All right, so the packet rate uh, is, is essentially, it, it's very similar in the sense that whichever one is handling the least number of packets at that moment, is the one that's going to get selected. So these are not overly complicated in terms of you know the the uh, uh, understanding I, I guess of of each of these, uh, but it is good to know what they do. So again, CPU is which one has the most CPU availability, kilobytes per second, which one is processing the or, or which one has the most kilobytes per second processing ability at that moment, and then packet rate, who is processing the least number of packets at that moment. Um, so those three are, uh, are three of the dynamic ones. And then the last one that we're gonna talk about is the virtual server capacity. And I apologize for my penmanship, but hopefully you can read that. So virtual server capacity. Uh, so I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this one. What this one is, let's say each of these virtual servers has a pool in and of itself. And it has, uh, let's say four different pool members, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this for each of these. So you've got, and I'll get progressively more sloppy with my drawing, of course, as you sit there and have to watch me draw these different little boxes. All right, so let's say this virtual server has a pool with four pool members in it, and likewise for the other two. The, uh, the question on virtual server capacity is, which virtual server has the most capacity at that moment? So let's say, for example, that this virtual server, uh, this pool member is down at the time, so I'll put an X over him, and this virtual server has, say, these two are down, and you can probably see where I'm going with this. This virtual server, let's say, has three down at the time. So this one has three gone. All right, which means, you know, conversely, if this one has one down, it has three available. This one has two down, two available. This has three down, it has one available. So which one's gonna get chosen at this point? It's gonna be this guy right here because he has three available. And what's gonna happen is the, uh, as, as requests come in, 
Um, this guy's going to get chosen. However, I will say this, these two will get chosen as well as capacity numbers, you know, fluctuate, come and go. Um, and if, if in the case that all of these have the exact same amount of virtual server capacity, then you default, and I'll just put a, a little arrow, and I'll just put an R, R. If they all have the exact same capacity available, then it defaults back to a round robin um, load balancing mode. So anyways, it's good to know uh, what all these things do. Again, you have to, you, the GTM has to know how these virtual servers are doing, uh, hence the name dynamic load balancing rather than say static load balancing modes. Um, but we wanted you to know what each of these things does. That way when you're out there, you're configuring your GTM, then you'll know which one to select and, uh, and what they all do. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this discussion of dynamic load balancing modes. And uh, so thanks for watching this Whiteboard Wednesday video, and we will see you guys out there in the community.